Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue marching along in our series on the living world. Today's topic is going to be the adaptive immune response. Last video we focused on the actual receptors in the cells. Today we're going to talk about them getting their job done. So there's only one objective that I need you to be able to accomplish by the end of this video, and that is to explain the actions of T and B lymphocytes in the adaptive response. Remember, lymphocyte is another word for white blood cell or T cell or B cell, uh, just kind of general. So first thing we need to talk about before we actually start talking about the response itself, we need to recognize that the immune response basically has two different forms or phases. There's a humoral response and a cell-mediated response. The humoral response is the immune system response to any pathogens in the blood or the plasma. So these are things that are found in the actual fluids of the body. Back in the day, fluids were known as humor, so it is the humoral response. Then there is the cell-mediated response. The cell-mediated response is actually responding to a cell that has been infected. So humoral, dealing with stuff in the body fluids, cell-mediated, dealing with stuff in specific cells. The processes that we're going to talk through in a second work on both of these. Our first and biggest, I guess, component or player in this game that we need to talk about is the helper T cell because he kind of starts everything off. So if you remember back in the last video, we talked about helper T cells can only become activated if an antigen is presented to them. Once an antigen has been presented to them by an antigen presenting cell, remember we talked about those antigen presenting cells, we've got something called the MHC, the major histo histocompatibility complex. That's the thing that actually um, shows antigen parts to the helper T cell. Once those two have hooked up, the helper T cell has recognized it, a cascade of things start to happen. So first thing, helper T cell recognizes that antigen, binds to the cell that's presenting it, and it begins to proliferate, which means that it starts to divide, um, producing clones of itself that are specific to that one antigen. As it is proliferating, it also starts releasing cytokines, and cytokines are signal molecules that are going to activate other similar helper T cells and other cells that are going to be involved in the response. And then those uh, cells that are proliferating go in a couple of different directions. Um, I've got the next step there as being specific action. Here's what I mean by this. Some of those cytokines that go out are going to activate B cells, and those B cells are going to start secreting antibodies that are specific to that antigen. So the antibodies will circulate through the blood doing their thing. And the cytokines will also activate cytotoxic T cells, and those cytotoxic T cells, if you remember, are going to go out and kill infected cells. So helper T cells kind of set off the whole process. Cytokines do some signaling, and based on that signaling, you get a multitude of responses. Once those cytotoxic T cells have been activated, they're kind of like a killer on the loose. And what they do is they're going to start circulating through the bloodstream, and they're going to recognize infected cells that are presenting a piece of the antigen that they have just been told about. Once that has that recognition has been made, those cytotoxic T cells can do a couple things. They can either just straight up engulf the broken cell and take it in through phagocytosis, or they can secrete proteins and compounds that cause lysis or apoptosis to cause the cell to burst, usually by compromising the membrane of the infected cell. And once that membrane's been compromised, fluids and ions and stuff rush into the cell. And cause it to blow up. So cytotoxic T cells, their work isn't pretty, but they get the job done by killing the infected cell. Talking about the B cells, once those B cells have been activated, their job is pretty simple. Rather than having to find specific cells that are broken, they just start uh, secreting antibodies. And those antibodies are going to go out and, as I'll talk about on the next slide, um, shut down the pathogen in a multitude of different ways. Now, an activated B cell can do some serious work. They can secrete up to 2,000 antibodies a second for the days, five days or so that they are alive. So as that cascade happens, the T cell sends out cytokines and signals this guy and says, hey, I have found the thing you work against. Start doing something. It starts secreting those antibodies, and the antibodies go out and start shutting things down for the pathogen. Speaking of those antigens or antibodies, these are the workhorses of the immune system. They do a ton of different things, and I'm going to go through just a couple of them. So at the most basic level, 
a pathogen. So because they bind specifically to the pathogen, once an antibody has bound to that pathogen, it can keep the pathogen from binding to a cell that it is going to damage. So that would be most basic, just neutralize it, shut it down, and keep it from binding to anything else. If a cell has been infected, the antibodies can bind to the infected cell and it marks that cell for destruction later on. So as our cytotoxic T cells or natural killer cells are circulating through the body, they can recognize a cell that has been marked with these antibody flags and know, hey, that one's broken, I gotta go take care of it. So that's another thing they can do. Third thing they can do is they can set off cascades of complement proteins. So complement proteins are proteins that once activated kind of work in a cascading manner that work, that sets off a final response. Usually that final response is building some sort of complex that is going to end up killing off a cell. So antibodies can also set off a cascade of complement proteins that are gonna end up setting off some sort of alarm or effect uh, down the line somewhere. So if there's work getting done in the immune response that is not being done by you know, natural killer cells, it's probably being done by an antibody. And I wanted to give you a quick summary of the whole process here and talk a little bit about the whole memory piece of immunity because that's a really big deal. I've got a flow chart here. Um, on our flow chart, note these two things. If it is a line, like a black line, that means it's stimulating. If it's a uh, brown line, it's giving rise to something. So I'm just going to kind of walk you through this thing. First exposure to an antigen, something brand new the body has never seen before. So the first thing that can happen is that activates a B cell, and then that B cell differentiates and forms plasma cells and memory B cells. Those plasma cells are going to go out, start secreting antibodies, and start working on the pathogen. These guys also get engulfed by antigen-presenting cells, and those antigen-presenting cells are going to do one of two things. They are either going to differentiate or activate cytotoxic T cells, or they may differentiate or activate helper T cells. They're actually going to do both, and those helper T cells can then also activate more cytotoxic T cells or B cells, and once these have been activated, they actually start producing more helper T cells. So you kind of got some positive feedback loops going on in here. Once our cytotoxic T cell has been activated, it is going to start to proliferate, making more of itself and also forming memory cells that will be used later on. Now these memory cells are super important because once you get a second exposure, so this is known as a primary response. A secondary response is when your body sees something again that it has seen before. Once you get a second exposure, all of these memory cells are already here. They don't have to be made and so they can go and just start making more cytotoxic T cells and they can make more plasma cells and the body kind of knows what to do and so it can jump into action and start secreting antibodies and getting work done much more quickly than it could the first time around. So now primary response is when you get first exposure, secondary response is dealt with much more quickly because it is something that the body has seen before. I want to wrap up with two final slides. The first one is talking a little bit about passive immunity. Um, Passive immunity is where antibodies are passed straight to a person without that person having been exposed to actual disease. So a good example of this is uh, mothers and infants. Um, in many ways, especially through breastfeeding, mothers pass antibodies onto an infant. Now, if you're an infant, the world's a dangerous place because you haven't had time for your body to build up immunity to all the creepy crawlies flying around. So since your mom has built up those immunities, she can actually pass the antibodies through the breast milk that'll kind of protect an infant until it has time to build up its own immunity. Um, next slide, I'll talk about vaccination. Vaccination is another form of passive immunity where you're getting antibodies without actually having the disease. Or in the case of vaccination, another way you can go is you are infected with something that resembles a pathogen, it's a killed pathogen, or it's a less virulent pathogen or something like that, but it gives your body the chance to build up immunity in a safe scenario where you're getting like a reduced form of the disease or a broken form of the disease, so your body can safely build up immunity without you having to go through a whole infection. I got to post it on the side because I'm also teaching a public health course right now. We talked about smallpox. Smallpox is one of the few diseases that mankind has actually eradicated. 1979 was the last known case of smallpox, and that was eradicated through a massive vaccination project. So Hopefully that was helpful to you, talking about the way that our adaptive immunity responds to 
pathogens. Um, thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and hopefully we'll see you again.